In Lil Jon's most successful song of all time, he says 12 words total. In his second most successful song of all time, he says just 19 unique words. But truthfully, most people would associate him with the three most basic words in the English language. Yeah! What? Okay! Now, people often criticize rappers for having small vocabularies, on the basis that less words equals less talent. But Lil Jon isn't a rapper, and some would argue that being able to build a legacy as iconic as his on such few words is actually more difficult, especially when you consider he kind of did this all by accident. Stay hydrated. Lil Jon is known for his energy, hype, and love for partying. With iconic lines like, if you ain't getting drunk, get the f out the club. He carried that same energy throughout his early years. In high school, he loved punk rock music, spending his weekends in mosh pits at Agent Orange shows. And considering his love for partying, what's more important to a party than a DJ? At age 16, Lil Jon taught himself how to DJ in his parents' basement. They used to let him throw his own parties under their supervision rather than let him be in the streets somewhere. And that proved to be the right decision, because as Lil Jon got into his 20s, his skills would impress someone who would change his life forever. John landed a regular DJ gig at Club Phoenix in downtown Atlanta. It was at Club Phoenix where he was scouted by rapper, producer, and executive Jermaine Dupri. Although Dupri was impressed by his DJing, he actually wanted him to be an A&R. When it came to A&R, all I could think about was Lil John because he was the person in the clubs. He knew people. DJs knew him. I had to hire him. An A&R's job is essentially to recruit and discover talent for the labels to sign, but So So Def was not even close to a well-established label, and Lil Jon didn't see this as a promising career path. He actually was considering enrolling in Georgia State University, and even took some courses at Fort Macpherson through Georgia Military College. But Dupree greenlit an album for $100,000 and gave Lil Jon full creative control, so a music career was on the horizon. With that money, Lil Jon linked with some of the best producers, DJs, and artists in the underground Atlanta scene to create the So So Def Bass All-Stars album. As you can imagine, it was an album full of dancey fun bangers, perfect for the club. You probably recognize track two. My Boo by Ghost Town DJs became known for the Running Man Challenge, a viral dance that absolutely dominated the internet in 2016, bringing it to number 27 on the Billboard Hot 100 20 years later. Lil Jon produced that song two decades earlier. However, in 1996, the album was also pretty popular. It climbed to the ninth spot on the R&B and hip hop chart, solidifying Lil Jon's presence and influence in the music industry. Jon was known all around the country for turning up clubs with the songs he produced. Now it was time for him to jump on the mic. The group Lil Jon and the East Side Boys was formed with him and his two childhood friends, Big Sam and Lil Bo. We'd be the rowdy crowd in the club. So Lil Jon told me and Bo we were going to do a song, Who You Wit. I was like, okay, we'll do a song and that'll be it. And a couple weeks later, they came back and said, we want you guys to do an album. So we did an album. I don't know why he chose us. I'm just glad he did. Lil Jon and the East Side Boys put out their first record independently starting with Get Crunk, Who You Wit, the album in 1997. The album was jam-packed with records that talked about shaking ass and getting lit, complemented by production containing simple synth melodies, repetitive claps, and lots of bass. They ended up selling 100,000 singles and 40,000 albums on their own. They had the underground in a chokehold because their records were fun. They reduced the idea of having intricate verses to fun chants that everyone in the club would memorize before the song was over. Put Yo Hood Up, Move Bitch, and Bia Bia were perfect examples of this. But even still by this point, Lil Jon never considered himself a rapper, which is ironic because this was arguably the most rapping he ever did, and would ever do in his career. Crunk music was about a hot beat, a hot hook, and something people could chant along with. Crunk is best defined as a fusion of Miami bass and Memphis buck roughneck chants backed with 808 beats and humming bass. Lil Jon was able to fuse the energy of bass music with street rap and came up with Crunk. But most of us were introduced to Lil Jon in 2002 with the track Get Low, along alongside the Ying Yang twins on the album Kings of Crunk. In the early 2000s, the music video was more important than ever. Many of you probably remember the days of turning on MTV and just seeing what new songs would pop up. The video for Get Low showed Lil Jon's over-the-top outfit, cane, and signature iced-out cup full of who knows what. This video sent the song all the way to number two on the Billboard Hot 100. Lil Jon became the most requested artist for radio DJs, and since he was a DJ himself, they were more than happy to play his tracks. Shake That Monkey peaked at 84 on the Billboard Hot 100. Salt Shaker peaked at number nine. Damn peaked at number four, which was an anthem to taunt your ops in the club. Hey, 
2003, Lil Jon was on fire and everyone in the industry wanted him on their song if they wanted it to go crazy in the club, and Usher was the first artist to truly capitalize on that. At the time, Usher was an R&B sensation who had slow and sensual songs topping the charts, but he wasn't exactly being played in the clubs. Lil Jon was about to change that when they linked up and made a song called Yeah, with the hook focusing on one of Jon's iconic ad-libs repeating 12 times. But they needed a rapper to certify this as a club smash, so they sent it over to Ludacris. Lil Jon sent me the record, you know, with Usher's lyrics on there. Another record instantly, as soon as I heard it, I was in my house in Atlanta. Instantly, I was like, this is out of here. It took me no time to write my verse for it. And I, I was like, this is such a smash, I gotta be on more than just a verse. Yeah spent an astonishing 12 weeks at the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100. Yeah is a true anthem of the early 2000s and at every awkward middle school dance. It was on every list of the top songs of the decade and is easily one of the most iconic hip hop club records of all time. From there, he had even more Billboard success with songs named after his ad libs, Let's Go and OK. He also had Kulo with Pitbull, Lovers and Friends, and What You Go do. Whether it was a song to get the gangsters hype or the ladies to dance, Lil Jon had the music industry in the palm of his hands. But it wasn't technically his music that solidified Lil Jon as a cultural phenomenon. It was Dave Chappelle. On season 2 episode 6 of The Chappelle Show, Dave premiered a skit called A Moment in the Life of Lil Jon. Are you checking any luggage today, sir? Yeah! yeah. You have to pack the bags yourself. And the bags have been in your possession the whole time? What? I'll never forget the morning after this episode aired. It seemed like everyone in my school was mimicking this skit, yelling what, yeah, and okay. Because of Dave Chappelle, people who had no idea who Lil Jon was knew him as the guy who said what, yeah, and okay. A moment in the life of Lil Jon became a go-to recurring bit for Dave's show. He reimagined the skit in season 2 episode 7 and episode 13 alongside the real Lil Jon. Keep in mind, the Chappelle show averaged 3.1 million viewers per episode in 2004, just shy of Saturday Night Live. 3.7 million, but his cultural impact reached far and beyond that. At the time, Dave Chappelle was comedy. Whatever he thought was funny, America thought was funny. And Lil Jon was one of the most successful bits he ever did. Jon even says Dave changed his life. I was talking about it to him that night, you know, every time I um, see him, I tell him, you know, like that night, I was like, you ruined my life? Now the reason why Lil Jon jokingly says Dave ruined his life is because of, well, this. Nigga, you sound like a bird. It's like, what? Nigga, you sound like a fucking dying bird. Is there anything that you say that you get so annoyed with that fans scream to you? What? Yeah. What is the most annoying shit ever? <laughs> Lil John was kind of turned into a meme which definitely helped his brand recognition, but was likely very annoying over the years to have random people shout at you obnoxiously when you're at the airport or dinner with your family. To make things even worse, the crunk era was dying quickly. For the next few years, Lil Jon had some popular songs in rotation, such as Girl Fight, Snap Your Fingers, and Go to Church. Although the songs made during the Snap slash Crunk era are nostalgic to look back on, the subgenre was very one-dimensional, and it's honestly surprising how long it remained popular. Songs were repetitive, with basic call and response chants, the beats all started to sound the same, and artists lacked the versatility necessary to maintain a fan base. And although Lil Jon was a pioneer of the genre, he needed to pivot, or he would get left behind. Since Jon was a producer, he was able to stay in the mix with people who were pushing the next sound. And as we approached the 2010s, we got this new wave of feel-good rap, pop, dance, and cheesy electronic sounds coming from the likes of Flo Rida, Pitbull, and LMFAO. These iconic songs became timeless wedding and prom bangers, and Lil Jon's iconic ad-libs and hype energy fit right into these tunes. Crazy, the anthem, Do You Remember, and you can't forget the legendary shots. I bet most of you watching remember Lil Jon from this era of his career. And if you think the crunk era went fast, these came and went even faster. One homecoming, one prom, and a wedding, and you never want to hear Pitbull ever again. Music was changing faster than ever as we approached the internet age. As we passed 2010, EDM festivals started becoming bigger and bigger. EDM DJs were often playing Lil Jon and Pitbull's songs Crazy and the Anthem. You also have to remember Lil Jon at his core is a DJ, so he was very curious to enter the new wave of open format DJs, which is basically just a DJ who plays any and all genres rather than just sticking to one. In 2011, he collaborated with Lil 
laid-back Luke and Steve Aoki on the track Turbulence, which was a huge anthem that year. He started going to massive festivals and performing alongside the DJs he knew. Plus, many upcoming EDM producers in all subgenres, from dubstep to Dirty Dutch House to EDM Trap, would often sample Lil Jon. His three iconic ad-libs were the perfect vocal chops to complement the energy that these EDM subgenres displayed. Or people often use this vocal shot from the song I'm the Ish by DJ Class. This was the go-to sample right before the beat drop in like 50% of EDM songs that year. But the one EDM track that changed his life was one sent over from DJ Snake. Snake sent Lil Jon a track that had a sample from Redman that said, This the countdown, bang the underground. He wanted Lil Jon to just re-say this phrase, but Jon didn't think the sample fit the energy of the track. On his first listen, he just blurted out, Turn down for what? and knew it was a smash. Only Lil Jon can say four words into a mic and know that it's gonna be a hit record. He added eight more words that most of you probably don't even care about. Fire up that loud, another round of shots. But DJ Snake didn't like it. Jon asked Snake to just trust him. They started playing the song at their DJ sets and the crowd will go nuts. It was one of the few records I've ever had that when I played it in my sets, every time another DJ came up to me like, yo, begging, what is that? Yes, Let begging. me get that, let me get begging. that. This song's popularity was also accelerated by Vine users, with the first lady even making a video to it. Turn up for what? <laughs> 10 years after his first number one song with Usher, Lil Jon went number one on the Billboard Hot Dance and Electronic chart for 12 weeks. One week for every word he said on the song. Lil Jon was already an icon in hip hop. This record made him an icon in EDM. And these days he has a much bigger presence there than in hip hop. EDM DJs will send him a record to scream one of his iconic phrases before the drop and he takes 50% of the revenue for the song. And he deserves it because a Lil Jon sample will always get people rowdy. Today, Lil Jon's life is pretty unpredictable. He's become a big fan of the side quest. He has a successful TV show on HGTV, where he showcased his unique vision and design expertise, surprising the world with his eye for interior aesthetics. He created his own wine label, Little Jonathan Winery, that reflects his unique style and brought a touch of sophistication to his brand. You might even catch him lecturing at prestigious universities such as Oxford. In music, the less words Lil Jon said, the more successful he was, and he secured a well-deserved legacy from that. But these days, he's got a lot more to say, and we owe it to him to listen. <laughs> they gonna say that at my funeral. They gonna be like, he was a good man. Yeah! <laughs> I said he was a good man. What? <laughs> man, he rests in peace. Okay!